I know it's a different approach than what any other competitor is using, but I think that's also the beauty of it. I think we'll get places that the other guys will not be able to get. I look at it this way. Uh, you know, if you have a, a piston engine airplane, it can only go so high. You put a turbocharger on it, it can go a little bit higher, but it's not gonna go as high as a jet. And I think what we have here is a jet. Today I'm following up on the progress that GE Healthcare is making with its new photon counting CT. But before I jump into the engineering feats being conquered on this new project, I want you to meet a very special man. And his name is Bob Sensig. Now I first met Bob when we were producing episode one, which was the announcement of deep silicon being used in CT technology. But soon after I learned that Bob was actually fighting COVID-19. So today, a year and a half later, I've got the wonderful opportunity to come to Bob's home and finally meet him. Hey. Mr. Bob Sensig. Hey, Mikey. How you doing? It's, it's been a long time. So another bit of a COVID handshake here. It's been a long time. Uh, why don't you come in? I'm about to make breakfast. Are you serious? Yeah, I am. Bob, you've been a patient. You've been involved in CT for over three decades. How does the photon counting deep silicon technology now take it to that next level? How does it become the jet that you spoke yeah. about? So what it means to patients, uh, it means that the doctors are gonna be able to see things that they can't see today. And there are places where we think that's gonna be uh, really important. And we're gonna discover places where that's going to be really important because today we can't see it. So how do we know uh, how to differentiate and how to tie it to, uh, to a challenge or problem that we're gonna solve? You've now retired, but back in 2017, you tagged some of the up and coming stars inside GE yeah. and they're charged with the responsibility now of taking photon counting computerized tomography to the next level. Tell me a bit about those characters. And yeah, them. I had the, the pleasure of trying to mentor a lot of engineers, 750 engineers worldwide. And it uh, was my job to spot the talent and try to develop the talent. And uh, these two guys, Chad Smith and JB are, are amazing and they, they started in way different places where they work and to grow into these positions. I'm so proud of where they've developed and, and very proud of myself for having you know, been able to, to help develop them. Now that Bob has retired, Chad Smith has taken on the role of Chief CT Hardware Engineer and he's now responsible for developing a system that can accommodate the deep silicon detectors. Wow. Chad, how are you? Let's do a bit of a COVID handshake. How are you, sir? Doing great, how are you doing? This is actually what happens when someone's inside it. Yeah, this is the inside of the Apex CT, sitting here spinning, spinning away, and this is what the patient would be inside the bore, and uh, the covers would be closed up, so they wouldn't see this. Maybe if we can just stop the spin, because I want to learn a little bit more uh, not just about deep silicon, but I want to learn a little bit more about actually what it takes to make a CT and what the challenges are. So let's, uh, let, great. let's go stop. All right. Chad, what are the challenges in actually just making a normal CT? You know, from a safety perspective, from an efficiency perspective? From a CT design perspective, we have many different things we have to think about. So first you saw that it spins, and it spins at forces that are above 50 Gs. So a typical rocket launch would be about 7 Gs. And so we're well above that. So we're designing electronics that can handle you know, very high G loads uh, at the same time, figuring out how to cool them. 50 Gs, like I used to fly in the military. And I think the bit on 50 Gs is, is like anything, any, even the small component, its weight is multiplied by 50. Absolutely anything. Cables, uh, lasers that are on here that are used for patient positioning. Everything is, is 50 times its force. And so you, you have to, essentially every single component has to be analyzed. Let's now move on to the deep silicon detector technology. How are you integrating that into the current CT technology today? So the, the nice part is we, with the Apex platform, we have a great starting point. We have a great gantry that we're able to integrate the new detector technology into and take advantage of it. So some things that we have to do uh, the new detector produces one to two orders of magnitude, so that's 10 to 20 times more data. 
And so we have to update and integrate our new data chain, as we call it, to be able to download that data and move that from the rotating gantry off uh, to our console. So that was a lowdown from Chad on how you integrate deep silicon detectors into a current CT system. Now, Jean-Baptiste Thibault, he's the chief system engineer and he's over this way, he's got the knowledge on how you can produce images from this technology. And this carnation will help us provide some of the answers. So, Ma, how are you? Let's do a bit of a COVID handshake here. As you can already see from the back wall, how does the carnation fit into the way that you can produce images from photon counting detectors? So a little while ago, we tried to come up with uh, an idea of a really cool experiment that would let us show the benefits of very high spatial resolution at the same time as we're gonna bring the spectral information into that image without the type of compromises that we normally have to deal with with today's technology. We have basically sitting in a, in a, in, in a vase, drinking iodine for a few days to make out with the spectral imaging power of the photon counting scanner, at the same time as we have a very high resolution image we're gonna make at the same time. These are the images, and uh, you can see on the left how the image is showing less detail. It's all soft and fuzzy compared to the image that you can see on the right-hand side out of what our deep silicone photon counting detector is actually able to produce. What was your first impression when you first saw the type of images that you could potentially get from the deep silicon detectors? Honestly, I felt probably the same way that uh, people first saw, you know, high definition TV kind of coming out, right? When uh, we were used to seeing something that uh, was, uh, you know, a, a nice looking image, but all of a sudden you realize the richness of information. And our goal at GE is to make sure that we can do, at the same time, a very high spatial resolution detailed image, such as the one we can see here on the right, while continuing to bring the information of the composition of the object that was scanned. And that, JB, must make you a very busy man. <laughs> that is uh, something that keeps us busy and uh, very excited about being able to bring this to market. As is clear, healthcare is ultimately personal and the motivations for advancing it, well, they should be too. Whether it's developing new innovation, running clinical evaluations, or working to bring new capabilities like photon counting CT to hospitals all around the world, there is a myriad of time, energy, and resource that goes into developing these new technologies. There's also a lot going on under the hood to bring photon counting CT with deep silicon to market. And it's that, along with another personal story, that's coming up next.